Uh, hello, welcome. This is Frederick at Tech Nordics. I'm going to give you a short overview of one of the most useful tools we have uh, for a little bit mid range and performance scopes called DPO Jet. It gives you the tool to a very good insight in the signal. So, the signal I'm using today is uh, created by my arbitrary waveform generator, connecting with the SMA cable to my scope just in here, and let's do something. But before we do anything, I would like to, you know, just as a remember to make sure that you're always using the highest sample rate. You know, higher sample rate spread the noise, you know, over more frequency. It means cleaner eye, cleaner measurement. I know in certain cases it's not possible uh, due to, you know, pattern length, etc. But in this case, it will work fine. So I put it at 100 giga sample. And then I go into what we call the, the Jitter and I DPO jet. And there's two models to choose from, serial data jitter I'm not so fond of that one, I use the one-touch jitter. So the one-touch jitter here does a couple of things. It you know, scales vertically and horizontally. And it will give you some standard measurement. It's one button test, it looks at everything, you know, set it, set, set it up. So at least you're in a good starting position. So from this position we get uh, four diagrams. If you don't know what time interval error means, it's the difference between when the clock arrives, you know, and when it should have arrived. And it's the embedded clock, of course. The second one is, if you look at this uh, time interval over time, and we do an FFT, that's called a spectrum. And then uh, here we have the I, and then we have total at the burr level. So we set kind of a burr level, we measure a little bit, and then we interpolate down to it to see if, you know, is the eye opening good enough. So we're not going to spend too much time on this one. And here we have some meta random jitter, you know, deterministic with upper, etc. And we're gonna, just going to do uh, clear everything and start from the beginning. So we clear everything. So there's some tabs that like uh, period frequency, jitter, time, I, amplitude, and some standards here. You know, some standards have very specific measurements. You can select one of those if you like. And that's for really debugging part. But you know what we're going to do here is very simple. We're going to create an eye, and we're going to do some uh, mask test testing. Next step here is to go into configure, and we go to mask, and we browse for a mask. In this case, I know it's a fiber channel. This one, and we can just then either recalc, you know, do the same settings on the same acquisition, or do a new one. It's, it doesn't really matter. In this case, actually, we can see we have uh, mask hits. It doesn't seem that many, but we have some masks. So we can clear and we can do a single, for example, if we want to do that. You know, it's still some masks. Or we can just run continuously. There's three modes of operation we can run this. And it's kind of quick and it you know, adds a lot of number of uh, UIs that we tested. So the three of them works fine. So clear and we do recalc. And let's see if we still have some hits. Uh, we still have some hits. One of the things, you know, interesting point here is, you know, you have hits in your mask, and maybe it's not good, you don't want to show your manager that, you know, the design is not perfect. So try to, you know, now we're going to try to figure out what's going on. And there is some tools already here. So if you go to plots, for example, on the mask hits one, there's a waveform, and you put that, and it gives you, I'm not sure if we can maximize this, it gives you white dots when the error occurs. And here you have the possibility to just zoom in on this one. It's over here. Here it is. And if you go for a sync, you can see in time exactly where it happens. It happened here in the beginning. So the other thing you can do here is go back to 100% zoom. Is this zoom on this one. And do it again. Here was a little bit more hits. It was falling edge here. So if you go to sync here, it's in the end. It's over here. This is a little bit too slow. So th these are the things you can just, you know, try to figure out the hesomastic, where did it happen. And there's another way to do that also. It's to use the, let me just go back here, just to use this one and, and plot the time interval error as a time trend here. And if you have this time trend over here, you know, you can kind of see already here that here, you know, we're a little bit big, you know, behind and after the clock. So it's like 20 picoseconds here and like 20 picoseconds here. So what you can do from here is you can go for options here and export this waveform uh, to ref1, for example. Yes, I want to overwrite. And when you've done it, uh, you have it over here and you can just, you know, scale out the zoom and you can look at this where the worst point is. So here was one error we found. And if we go to the next one, uh, which was in the beginning, 
I'm set this one, take the zoom and just zoom around this a little bit here. And we go to sync. Here should be the next one. And of course, this is the top one over here. This one over here. So this is a very, very simple thing we did. Um, what we can do more now is I can go to ref. You know, we, we spotted the issue. I mean, we can see the from time and well. We can see the mask sit. And we can place it like this or we can place it like this. Doesn't really matter. So, so this is very basically what I did. You know, we did a mask. We did a mask test. We had some violations. I found the violations, different methods. Uh, next thing would be to add another thing to see where it, could it come from. And in the plots here, in the time interval, it's also something called spectrum. So we kind of do an FFT of this one to see if there's any continuous or some repeating patterns. It's not sure it is. So, so go for spectrum. And I don't like this setup. It's a personal thing, but I don't like this setup here. So I'm going to configure it. So vertical scale should be linear and horizontal scale should be log. It's a little bit easier to see. And we can see that with the biggest impact on jitter we have here is uh, the around 10 megahertz. So 10 megahertz clock somewhere or interfering. And then there's some like you know, under 100 and up and it goes up. So in this case, it doesn't really help us on this. I think this is just noise. So we go back here. The other thing that most people want to do is you know, add some other measurements. We can do uh, you know, rise time, uh, period, uh, width, for example, and we just re recalculate them. And in some cases, there's a, you know, for this mask test, there's a you know, number of hits. We have two hits, you can see here. There's a plus sign, and we can see the mi max and the min. And you can also use this zoom button to go into the max and the min. Or you can go to uh, rise time. You know, the fastest rise time, you know, the slowest is this one, the fastest is this one, and you can see from the bit, you know, coming out from uh, 0 to 1, it's a, you know, 11101 one, 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 zero, one versus uh, 0001, zero, 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 it's, it's much faster. So there's some tricks here you can do. Um, the other thing people ask me is that how can you test this, you know, how can I test this? So you go to, you know, this one and you add limits. And I have a limit file called Frederick, and I just t turn it on. So in this case, we have pass for uh, you know time interval error. We're failing this. We're failing a lot of that. So we clear and do a single, and let's see if we can do it a little bit better. Uh, and here we have, and we actually passed the positive width this time. So let's do a report. It looks a little bit better at least. So I go to reports, and I, I like this a lot, and a lot of people are using it. And we can save waveforms along with this. So just one click and you can save the waveforms. But I will not. But I can add some comments, you know. Uh, demo. Frederick. Okay. And then I just press save. And this, you know, creates a lot of diagrams for you. You can work with. And it pro uh, produce an MHT kind of file. And here's the setup. This is good because it contains the serial number. You know, the DPA jet versions, you know. You have all the tests here, like low margin, high and low, but pass and fail. You know, pass, pass, fail, fail. And you have the, you know, plots and images. And, you know, this is basically what we did. You know, we really analyzed the high-speed serial data. And we made it, you know, in quite fast time. And I hope that you really enjoyed this short video. And I hope the sound this time is much better.